Hey, hi, this is Ellie Fishman, and uh, oops, hi, um, hello everybody, and welcome to Facebook Live. Today is, I think, about the uh, 7th of July. I hope everyone's having a good early July. Um, we're working hard, I'm sure everybody is. It's very busy, hospitals are busy, the COVID numbers in part are up, but you know, the good news, hospitalizations are down. So I think there's some positivity on things. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, if those of you who are working, surely in academics, I'm just closing something here, um, realize the, uh, this is a, it's a crazy week for all of us because uh, we've gone from our fellows who were 12 months here, which means they were essentially attendings and now they're attending somewhere else, to a bunch of new fellows who basically were residents a couple days ago. So it's a typical transition and people want to take vacation, the good news people are taking vacation, people are traveling. So I think us, like everybody, things are a little bit hectic. So that part's good, so no problem, no problems at all, no problems at all with that. So um, I, the topic today is bladder cancer. So just a couple of things I wanted to discuss. So one thing, um, I mentioned this when I talk about misdiagnosis, I also mentioned this when I talk about pitfalls, is that bladder cancer is a very common cancer. I mean, obviously, a typical presentation of bladder cancer, you would say it's macroscopic hematuria. And then patients get worked up, they get cystoscopy, and you make the diagnosis, or they're worked up for hematuria, and you find a bladder cancer. So the first thing I want to mention is a lot of people have bladder cancer early, or small bladder cancers, and they have hematuria, but it's not visible, and so it's not detected. Now, we do lots of patients now, particularly older patients, remember bladder cancer, is a disease of older patients. You're not seeing it in 30 or 40 year olds at 60, 70, 80, 90. And those are patients who often have vascular disease. So they're getting a TAVR, then you have an aortic aneurysm or suspected aneurysm, you're looking for dissection, you know, all sorts of reasons. Or they have abdominal pain and you're doing an arterial phase as part of the study or a venous phase, whatever. One of the things to remember, and we always give oral contrast, so now we give oral contrast. Uh, urine is excreted, that's one of the reasons we give oral contrast, as well as distending the, the stomach and small bowel. But what happens is, with the bladder distended, if you see anything in the bladder that thickens the wall of the bladder, where there's enhancement, and I don't mean thickening 5 cm, I'm talking about five millimeters or a centimeter, that's a small bladder cancer. Yes, you can get some inflammatory things or Occasionally, you'll have something uh, like a polyp that's a benign polyp in the bladder, which we can't really say. But I think the point to recognize is we can pick up bladder cancer very early. Bladder cancer early, it gets resected, patients are cured. If you don't pick it up early, the tumor grows, and then when it presents, the patient has gross hematuria and may have adenopathy or spread beyond the bladder. So very important to look routinely, not for patients with hematuria, or some urinary tract problems for patients who are just being scanned. All of us miss those small bladder cancers. Now at Hopkins, we rarely miss them. Now that seems obnoxious, but I'll tell you the reason why. We've spoken about this so often at our conferences and our lectures. And so we always tell people when you're looking at aortas, always look at the bladder. It only takes you about five seconds. You need to just look at it and make sure there's no focal thickening. If you see something, say something in your report, that is. And if it's not an emergency, but the patient will get cystoscopy and perhaps get it resected, and that will be it, and you will make a cure. So very important for that reason. Now the question is, what about the bladder um, when there's diffuse wall thickening? You know, you can have diffuse thickening as tumor, but I have to admit, when you see diffuse bladder wall thickening, most of the time, it's simply the bladder's not distended. So people always say, well, there's a symmetric wall thickening all around. That probably means the bladder's not distended. Okay, simple enough. If the bladder is distended and there's wall thickening, it could be due to bladder outlet obstruction or chronic symptoms, like in patients with a big prostate. It could be due to cystitis, but with cystitis, the thickening is often irregular, not often symmetric perfectly 360. And often there can be some stranding in the perivesical fat. So that can be very helpful. If you're uncertain, you ask for your analysis and that usually works very nicely. 
Um, you don't want to overcall every case of bladder wall thickening because most of the time what I'll say is there's apparent bladder wall thickening, but the bladder is not well distended, so it's likely due to under distension. Okay. Now, if the patient had fever, then you would maybe be more strict and say bladder is not distended, um, wall looks thickened, but it, although this could simply be due to lack of distension, uh, in light of the history, your analysis would be recommended. So that works out very nicely. Bladder cancers can be larger, they can be bulkier. Um, there's a range of bladder cancers, but as I mentioned to you, the big ones are easy. It's the small ones that people typically miss, even the five millimeters. If you see something in the bladder and it's five millimeters, say something, okay? Cystoscopy is easy enough to do. Now, other things with bladder cancer, we do a lot of staging of bladder cancer. When you stage bladder cancer, you wanna make certain you're looking at the bladder and the kidneys and the ureters. Remember, TCC 40% of the time is multifocal. So if you have a bladder cancer, make sure you're not missing a ureteral cancer. Make sure you're not missing a cancer in the calyces of the kidney. So look very carefully, do multiple phase acquisition, <coughs> excretory phase imaging. Look at the images with MIP. Um, look at the images with wide and window instead of 400 over 10, do 550 over 50. Make sure you look at it that you're not gonna miss any small tumor in the calyces or in the bladder proper or in the ureters. That becomes very, very important in terms of staging. Again, bladder cancers or transitional cell in general can be multifocal. You pick up one lesion, you gotta pick up all the lesions. Remember that 40% um, that rule about multifocal disease. And so planning therapy is critical to make sure you're not missing any other lesions. Now we also do bladder cancer in terms of staging. Uh, when you have bladder cancer, you worry about nodes, pelvic sidewall, you worry about inguinal nodes, but that's usually with bulky tubers. You worry about nodes, the aortic bifurcation, as well as the external and internal iliac nodal chains. It is possible, of course, to have periodic adenopathy, but when you have periodic adenopathy from bladder cancer, you invariably almost always have pelvic adenopathy because things drain into the pelvis and then drain upward into the nodal groups. So you can see very bulky adenopathy. Most of the time the nodes are small. Remember, we typically say nodes 1.5 cm or greater or abnormal. With bladder cancer, anything above eight, nine millimeters, particularly a cluster, I'm going with positive. So bladder cancer can involve nodes when nodes are very small. So that becomes a very, very helpful thing as well. Um, let's see, what else, what else can I tell you? Uh, again, look at the upper tract, look at the liver, bladder can go to liver, bladder can go to lung. Obviously, you're staging bladder cancer, you're getting a chest CT uh, most of the time, particularly when they're larger tumors. Uh, new chemotherapy works very well. Surgery is the mainstay of bladder treatment. Excuse me, but chemotherapy becomes very, very important as well. So that's, that's an important factor to keep in mind. Um, what else? What things can fool you in the bladder? Well, if you have a bladder mass, it looks like a classic mass, but it enhances a lot. You've got to think about a paraganglioma or a, a extra adrenal pheochromocytoma, whatever you want to call them. Patients who have uh, these uh, paragangliomas in the bladder typically have symptoms. When patients urinating, they can pass out, they can get hypertensive crisis. So it's unusual, but it does occur. I mentioned there's some overlap between infection and inflammation and cancer. It can be tricky, focal thickening can occur with inflammation or cancer. Cancer usually enhances, but sometimes inflammation enhances. So again, cystoscopy, urine cultures, clinical history, all of those become very important. So I think that's, that's a lot of what I wanted to speak about today. Um, other things in the bladder, infection, air in the bladder wall, emphysema and cystitis, usually diabetics, rare, typically E. coli infection, but a very extensive infection. And obviously emphysema uh, cystitis can be, is a surgical emergency, very, very high, uh, very, very important. Um, what else about infection? Those are the main things. Now let me see, I see uh, uh, Lidiana's in California. Hey Lidiana, and you're right, the kids are wearing me out, but it's the, the best, of, best of times, cannot complain at all, it's a lot of fun. And John's in Pete CT today, so John is uh, cranking away in Pete CT. And uh, Monoverta, I think it's in Nepal, if I remember correctly. And I'm not sure what Kim Lata is from. 
Hopefully they're not from Hopkins. <laughs> um, hopefully they're not one of my new fellows. You never know, this time of year, I don't know any of the fellows' names. You know how it is, you get a piece of paper, has a bunch of names, a bunch of pictures. I looked at it for about 0.1 seconds, then everyone puts a mask on so you can't recognize them anyway, but um, hopefully we'll get to recognize them over the next couple months. So if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. If not, um, I'll let everybody get back to working. Uh, I know everyone's busy and um, hope everyone has a great week. There are, just let me mention one more thing, there are a bunch of new lectures coming out every week on CT Is Us. All the lectures I now have finished through January, believe it or not, are brand new lectures, totally rewritten, so they're pretty good. You know, it may sound the same title a little bit, but it's all new material. It's pretty impressive, I think. Uh, Sarah's finishing them up. We put up them a week at a time, but uh, I think we're finished till the last week of January. So I really cranked them out. Um, they're long, they're great, lots of images. So, um, and anyway, you, some people ask us, where can you see these videos? You can see YouTube Live on YouTube. You can see Facebook Live on Facebook, but they connect. Also, all of our lectures are on the website, but they're also on the Apple Store. You can subscribe there. They're also on YouTube, our YouTube channel, which we have over 35,000 people, no, 38,000 people now signed up who are members of our YouTube channel. Um, so there's a lot of places you can see our stuff, and we look forward to people coming, commenting, and visiting. And with that, I'll thank everybody for their attention, and um, hope everybody has a great day. Bye, guys.